and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new dye embroidery hoop and we're also going to be introducing the embroidery hoop rainbow add-on. These stitching dies are so much fun and I love that you can stitch a heart, you can have a plain pattern to do all sorts of custom designs and that amazing rainbow that's my absolute favorite. So let's go ahead and check it out. First, we're gonna take a look at the main embroidery hoop die. And there you can see that you can either have a heart pattern or a plain pattern where you could add your own design. And that main embroidery hoop die also has, of course, the embroidery hoop and the screw for the top of the hoop. And so you can either have the heart inside of the embroidery hoop or you can have this plain pattern. We're also gonna show you another way to use the embroidery hoop at the end of the video. And to attach the embroidery hoop, all you need to do is just add some adhesive on the back and then you can layer it onto that piece that you're going to stitch. Then you can also just add that little screw to the top of the embroidery hoop for a more realistic look. Now the great thing about that hoop is that you could add any sort of design to it. So we had to create a rainbow add-on for it. And this rainbow add-on is so much fun. It's my absolute favorite. I love it so much. And just like we did with that plain design, all you need to do is just add some adhesive to the back of the hoop, and then you can just layer the hoop right on top of the rainbow. And you can see how beautiful that looks. And then here is a look at the three different designs that you can create with the embroidery hoop. And next up, you guys are in for a treat because Shari is going to show you how to do the embroidery on these three different styles using different stitches. And Shari has been doing this for a long time. She has so many great tips. And for someone like me that's new to this kind of stitching, I am so excited to hear what she has to say. So take it away, Shari. So I'm going to show you how to do some basic stitches on these die cut pieces. For this demonstration, I am using some DMC six strand floss. This is the standard floss that you can find in any craft store and there will be some rainbow packs in the Wan Fawn shop as well, but this is easy to find. And if you pull it from the end where the number for the color is, you can pull it straight out of the skein. You can also put it on some bobbins that you can find, which is what you see in the bowl there. And this is able to be separated into the six strands. So if you're familiar with stitching at all, usually we separate this into a smaller number of strands to do our stitching. But for today's stitching, I'm just gonna use the whole piece. I do have two examples here. The one on the right is stitched with three strands, so I separated the piece of floss in half, and the one on the left is stitched with six. So you can get a nice chunky look or a thinner look, depending on what you want. I'm going to be using the full piece of floss today, so I'm using all six strands. And I'm going to push aside the rainbow and the full piece that goes inside of the embroidery hoop. And I'm going to start with the heart. Now you do want to get a needle that fits through the hole. There is also needle packs available in the Lawn Fawn shop as well. But you also want to make sure that the eye is big enough that you can fit your thread through. Luckily for us, these holes are pretty big, so any thread and any needle is really going to fit through there unless you have something just super huge. So you want to make sure that it fits through that hole, and mine does. And the way I like to thread my needle is I like to put a loop at the end, just like this, and thread the loop through the eye. And I have had great luck threading my needle this way. I haven't had to use a needle threader, but of course that is always an option if you need it. But this has worked really well for me threading my needles. Now the first stitch I'm going to teach you today is just a cross stitch. So this is the stitch that we see very often in embroidery projects. And we're gonna start from the back and I'm going to show you how to start your thread for this. So I like to stitch my stitches from the top right corner to the bottom left and then come back and do the other cross. Also the way to stitch cross stitch is to make sure that you go one direction for the bottom stitch and the other direction for the top. And you can pick whichever way you like. This is just the direction I go. So top right to bottom left. And then I'm going to make sure that I catch the tail on the back when I do the next one. 
So you can see how that thread is underneath the thread on the back. Now, I like to do an entire row in one direction and then go back the other way. Now for this, since I have the heart, I can skip over to the other side because this is all technically the same row. I am going to trim off this little tail here. And then I'll do the other side in the same way I did the right side at the very top of the heart. So I do the whole row, one direction, and then when I get to the end here, you can see they're all going from top right to bottom left. I'm going to go back the other way and finish my X. So I'll just go in this top hole here and then I'm going to go top left to bottom right all the way back across my row. And of course, since I have the lovely paper, solid paper there, it's easy to cross back over to the other side and you don't see the stitches behind. We have the nice advantage of that die cut heart hiding the stitches when I cross over to the other side. So I'm going to skip ahead here and you can see I am coming to the end of my thread. And once I get to the end of this row, I really don't have enough thread to start going back the other direction. I started to say, oh, let's do a couple stitches, but really it's a pretty short piece. You wanna make sure you don't get it too short so that you can still thread it underneath some of those loops on the back. It only takes a few. Pull the tail through to secure the end of the thread. And then you can just trim off that tail. You only need to put it through a few loops. Don't worry about doing the whole row. This isn't like it's a piece of clothing that's going to be tugged on or anything. Once it's on the card, that back is very secure. Now to start a new string, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to thread it underneath a couple of those stitches. You can see it doesn't really matter which row it is. I chose the row above. And then I'm going to continue on and go back towards the right and finish off all the X's on this row that I started. And I'll just fill in this whole heart with X's. This is all in the same color, but you could vary the colors if you wanted to. So that is the basic cross stitch. And now we're going to learn how to do a back stitch. Now this, I'm going to do some rainbow stripes for the back stitch. I don't want to start in the top hole. I'm going to be going from the bottom hole to the top hole every time. So I'm starting in the second one down and then I'll go through the top. Then on the next stitch, I'll come through the bottom hole for this little portion of that line and go through the top. And I will continue this all the way down the line. Doing it in this fashion, make sure that your stitches are nice and even. Now I am making sure that as I do this, I try to catch that tail a little bit so that it is nice and secure. So you can see how nice and even this line ends up. And I think that is because on the back side, it's all even as well. If you just went in one and then skipped to the next one, you'd end up with some bulky thread behind one of the portions of the line and no thread behind the other one. Now for this, I'm going to do some rainbow stripes. So I'm just counting over to where I wanna do the next red line. And I'm actually gonna come up from the bottom. And this is not how I should have started. I should have started in the second hole just like we were doing before, but this time we're going from the top hole to the bottom hole because we're traveling upward towards the top of the circle. And I did not cut the thread between these two. I just kind of traveled over with my thread. So there's a piece on the back that's just going to get tucked under some of my other threads when I start stitching the other lines. And I really wish I could stitch this fast, but I can't. <laughs> Now that I've gotten to the top, I can secure it. I could kind of weave it underneath this a couple times. So you can see I'm sort of wrapping it around 
did it about three times. And then I'll just trim off the end. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'm actually going to do a little line at the first that I missed. Now I'm moving on to the next color, which is an orange. And this back stitch is perfect for the little rainbow. And I'll show you an example with the rainbow back stitched when I get done teaching you these stitches. We're going to learn a different stitch on the rainbow piece. Now to move over to my next line of orange, I actually just put it underneath and tacked it underneath one of those strings already had. That way when I travel, it's not going to be seen outside of the edge of the circle. That's just gonna kind of hold the string back out of the way. And you can see I've gone through and done all of my colors and now I'm finishing up with the purple. Now because you are tacking this underneath like this, you could actually, what I'm gonna do is loop it back through itself, sort of tighten a little knot, and trim off the tail. So there's a couple options on how to tie that off. So here is some back stitched striped lines. And you can see how nice and even those are. And then here is the cross stitch. And next we're gonna learn how to do a chain stitch. Now I'm going to be doing my chain stitch demonstration on the rainbow add-on, but the back stitch works really great for the rainbow as well. Now for this one, I'm going to show you a really easy way to tack down your floss. Because we have some nice solid cardstock on this particular die cut, I have some space that I can just tape the tail down with a little piece of washi tape and you're never going to see it. Now for the chain stitch, I'm going to come in that bottom hole. I'm going to pull my floss in sort of a loop. I'm going to go back into that same hole at the bottom, but I'm not going to pull my floss all the way through. So I'm going to keep a loop there. Then I'm going to come up through the next hole so that my needle is inside of my loop. And then I'm going to pull it. Don't pull it too hard. You want to leave a little bit of a loop there. So you want to be gentle with it. And then I'll move on to the next one and do the same thing. So back into the same hole, pull my floss to where there is a loop, come up through the next hole through the loop, and then pull the loop closed. So I'll just show you a couple more times and then I'll work my way around this. This gives you a much batter stitch and you'll see the difference between this and a back stitch rainbow when I show you some examples here towards the end. So again you just go into the same hole and you come up through the loop. Now when you get to the end of the chain, which I am almost there, what you want to do is go in through that same hole come up through your loop and pull it. And then when you wanna go back into that loop, but you want to make sure you're on the other side of the floss. I'm sorry, this is a little bit blurry. It didn't focus too well, but you basically want to tack down the end of that loop with your floss. So it comes up inside the loop and when you go back down, you're outside the loop. And then I'm just going to tie this off with like a little knot like I did on the purple thread. So I'm just threading it underneath my stitches on the back side and then back through itself and making a little knot. And then I can just trim off that little tail. And I did have to stop and start my floss in the middle. I didn't quite have enough to do this really big arch of the rainbow. So I'm just tying the two ends together in a knot so that they're secure and I'll just trim off the little tails on that as well. So if you pull off enough floss, you shouldn't have to do that because this isn't a very big piece. I just didn't have quite enough. Now for my other colors, I did do much better on getting enough floss to where I didn't have to stop and start one at the end. So like I said, this is great with a back stitch as well. And I'll show you an example of that. So here are the stitches we learned today. So we have the cross stitch, which is that heart at the top. I also filled in the large 
piece that has all the circles with cross stitch as well. And I did that in a checkerboard pattern by just changing the colors of my floss. I did the panel with the stripes in the back stitch, and then you can see an example of the back stitch as a rainbow. And then we have the chain stitch rainbow, and you can see the difference between the chain stitch and the back stitch on those. I'm going to take the heart that I stitched earlier and create a simple card, and I'm going to show you how to put that hoop around the heart. So the embroidery hoop die comes with two pieces. This one has the hoop and the heart, and then it also has that solid piece. So when you use the heart, the hoop fits perfectly on the outside and you don't have anything to glue it to. That is where the solid piece comes in. So I cut the heart again and the hoop from some mermaid cardstock, and I'm going to put this hoop onto this solid piece just using a little line of glue around the outside edge. And you can see with that embossed line that it puts on there where exactly to put your glue. And I'll just pop that mermaid cardstock embroidery hoop onto the solid piece. Then I will add some glue. I'll even put it on the back of the floss a little bit. And I can fit this circle right inside of that hoop. You can also use the holes because you can kind of see them through those outside edge holes and line them up perfectly so that this is perfectly straight. And I'm just holding this here and kind of giving it some pressure until my glue has a chance to set. It only takes a little bit. Now for the pin at the top, I thought it would be fun to cut that from some gold glitter cardstock for a little bit of a change. And I'm just putting two glue dots, or two dots of glue, I should say, on the back of the pieces at the top. And then I'll just touch my pin to the back. And I think that's the easy way to put this pin at the top. Now I'm setting that aside and moving on to my card base and I'm going to be using some really rainbow paper and making a mini slimline card and I love that you can cut the 6x6 directly down the center and get a perfect background for a mini slimline. I am using one of the mini slimline stitch rectangles to cut a little bit of a border off so that you will see a little bit of the white on the outside edge of my card. Then I can just adhere this centered into this card base. This card base is three inches tall by six inches wide. And I just love that with a six by six paper and especially these rainbow stripes, you get all the colors. You don't have to cut anything off with a mini slim line. Now I'm using some Henry's ABCs and I've cut the letters for I and U out of some pixie dust cardstock as well as some narwhal cardstock and I'm just going to layer these together with a little bit of an offset so that I have a shadow behind my letters and that's going to help them stand out just a bit more on this colorful background. Once I have that shadow put on each letter I'm just going to glue it directly to my pattern paper. So once I have that word U glued down, I'm actually going to use my ruler as a guide to make sure that my eye is lined up across the card and at the same height. Now for the hoop, I am going to add some thin foam squares to the back of it so that it is popped up off that card base just a little bit. And then I'll just center that up between my two words and between the top and the bottom edge of the card. Now to finish it off, I thought I would add some glitter hearts. So I'm cutting the hearts, all three sizes of the hearts from the Hearts and Stars with Skinny Tag Die set out of that same gold glitter cardstock that I used for the pin of the embroidery hoop. And I've just scattered these around and then I went back through and picked them up with my tool and dropped them back in place with a little dot of glue. And I thought it needed just a little bit extra at the top of the heart, so I've pulled out my twine here. I doubled it up and tied a bow so that it's like two bows together. And then I'm just going to trim off the ends. 
And then I will just add this right to the top of the hoop. And I think that this makes it look nice and finished as if you had a finished cross stitch piece that you put on your wall with a painted hoop and a nice pretty bow at the top. And here is my completed card with that cross stitched heart. I love that you have that detail of that heart and then you can just add it to a card with some nice simple things around it. So I've pulled out the So Very My stamp set. I've already colored and cut out the images that I'm going to use on my card today. And I'm going to be focusing my card around that rainbow that I stitched using the chain stitch. Now for the hoop, for the embroidery hoop, I've cut that from some craft card stock. And then for the little pin or the screw, I'm going to cut that from some silver metallic card stock. So I'll just add a little line of glue. You can see where that embossed circle is. So if the glue is on the outside, then this hoop is going to line up perfectly. And then I'm just going to go and put two little dots of glue on the back side of those two little prongs that stick up at the top. And then that's where I'm going to add my pin. I added some glue to the bottom of my strings too just to make sure that they stay in place. Now for the background, I'm using some of the What's Sewing On paper. I originally made this card with the Petite Paper Pack, but I actually decided to change and use the 12 by 12 for that blue background. And then the bottom or like the tabletop of my card is going to be this pink paper from the Stripes and Sprinkles Paper Pack. So I'm using the stitched rectangle stackable to cut these out so I get that nice stitching detail around all four sides. And I've cut that out of that pink paper and then I'll do the same with this piece of a 12 by 12 that's cut down. I am going to ink the edges of this pattern paper with some Moonstone ink. This blue ink matches this blue stitched paper perfectly. And you can see that you darken up the edges and that stitching detail that the die created really stands out some more too. I'm not going to ink it up too much. I just kind of wanted just the edges to stand out a little bit. Now I need to figure out how tall I want this base piece to be. So I've just put my embroidery hoop on there to kind of place it, made a little mark with my pencil, and then I'm just going to trim this down. So this is going to be at the bottom of my panel. And before I glue it down, I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment. And this sentiment says, you are so amazing. It is from the So Very Mice stamp set. And I'm just stamping that in some black ink right along the bottom. Now I'm going to start assembling my card by putting that back panel onto my card base. And then I'll glue this along the bottom. And then of course I want to start with my embroidery hoop. I've already gone ahead and put some foam squares on the back. You can see I've got it around the outside and in the center of the rainbow and I'm avoiding the thickness where my threads are. And I'll just center this up in the middle of my card. Once I have that in place in the center of my card, I can start to pull out all my cute little mouse images and add them around this embroidery hoop. So I'm starting out with this cute little dress form. I just think it is adorable. And I've glued that right to the back of the card, so nice and flat. I also thought it would be cute to have the little needle with thread popping out from behind the embroidery hoop like it is a piece of thread that is finishing up its stitching. I have this little guy over here to the left and I'm going to add the scissors to his hands. Then for my little mouse with the embroidery hoop, I need to stamp something for her to stitch. So I'm adding those little stitching lines in some guava ink. So I've added some foam squares to this little mouse. I'm using some different thicknesses of foam squares. I'm using thick ones where the mouse is touching the card base and some thin ones where the image is touching the embroidery hoop. And this just allows a little extra dimension on the card. I'm doing the same for my little guy with thimble here. I thought both of those were going to rest on the embroidery hoop, but turns out 
one didn't. So I'm just going to tuck another little thin square in there and double it up. And now I have these cute little spools and I'm going to put this red one on with a thin foam square, tuck it up under that little mouse with the thimble on its head. And then this one has a thick foam square and I'm going to do the same. So they kind of look like they're layered behind each other. And this little mouse has something to sit on and doesn't look like it's floating in the air. <laughs> Now for my fourth little mouse, I am putting that one over to the right so we have a balance of all our little images. And I'm going to put this bright green button in their hand. So I still have lots of little embellishments to spread around. I have some spools of ribbon. And you know, I wanted this to look just like all of our craft rooms with all the goodies spread about while we're creating because that's what these little mice are doing. And then for these two ribbons, I'm going to stack them and stack them sort of offset so it's not so perfect and put those right in front of that little mouse with the embroidery hoop. Have another little spool, and that really balances things out very nicely. And then I have all these little buttons to sprinkle around. So I'm trying to kind of vary where my colors are. So I put that red button over there instead of right here beside the red spool. I'm putting the yellow button by the red spool. So I want to make sure I don't have any two colors right next to each other. And then, of course, these are really fun to kind of sprinkle around that embroidery hoop frame. And finally, I want to add that little bit of sparkle and glitter to catch the eye. So I added some to all the little buttons as well as the spools of ribbon. And here is my finished card with that stitched rainbow in the center as the centerpiece and all those cute little mice all around it. And I just think that this turned out so adorable. Oh my goodness, Shari, I am so in love with this card and that stitching on the rainbow is absolutely stunning. I loved all of your tips and I'm so excited to try them all out. But I wanted to show you how to use the embroidery hoop without actually doing any embroidery. So we're gonna die cut the hoop out of some wood grain cardstock and we're gonna die cut the screw out of some narwhal cardstock, just a nice gray. I also really like cutting it out of metallic cardstock too. And all I need to do is flip that hoop over. I'm gonna add some tape runner there, just any kind of adhesive to the back. And then I can add that screw to the top. And now I have my main embroidery hoop design going. And I'm gonna start working on stamping something for the center of the embroidery hoop because the stitching looks absolutely amazing, but I love that this is a perfect place to stamp a sentiment or even a cute scene. So here I have some of the speckled eggshell cardstock, and I really like this cardstock because it almost looks like the fabric that you see in an embroidery hoop. And one of the very cool things about the embroidery hoop is that it fits all of our magic messages sets. So this one is the magic spring messages because I wanted to stamp a happy Mother's Day, but the original magic messages and the magic holiday messages are also a perfect match for this hoop. The perfect size circle for behind the hoop is a two and a half inch circle. And you'll see here that you could use the plain or the stitch circles. I'm gonna use these plain ones. You could also use a circle punch. You could even trace the hoop and then trim it out with your scissors. So there's a lot of fun ways to add some cardstock behind this hoop. We're gonna hold that in place with some low tack tape and then run it through the die cut machine. And then I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back of the hoop and we can layer that hoop on there. And I love this look because it looks as if somebody embroidered that phrase, Happy Mother's Day, with the flowers. So sweet and so cute. I just love it so much. And stamping in that soft peachy keen ink, I feel like really adds to that beautiful stitch look. And that paper that has a little bit of texture to it also really adds to this beautiful embroidered look. And to keep going on with our sewing theme, I'm going to take the What's Sewing On paper and I've gone ahead and die cut that with the largest of the small stitch rectangles. And I've also die cut a piece of card, craft cardstock with the same size rectangle. And so I want this craft cardstock to be a floor. So I'm going to layer my embroidery hoop onto my piece there and then just take a little mark exactly how high I want my floor to be. And then I can put that in my paper trimmer to trim it down. And then I'll just add some adhesive to the back of that piece and layer that onto the card. Then next, to help give that embroidery hoop a little pop, I'm going to add some foam squares on the back and then add that to the center of my card too. 
Next, I'm gonna take out the So Very My stamp set. And actually, Rebecca went ahead and stamped, colored, and die cut these. And this is Rebecca's card design. It's so beautiful, and her coloring is just stunning. And I am in love with the colors that she did for that dress. I really do wish that dress was a real dress in person. I guess I'm gonna to have to learn how to sew so I can make it. <laughs> so I am going to add some of my pieces with tape runner and some with foam squares, just to give some nice dimension into this cute little sewing scene. And then I'm just gonna add that little needle and thread into the hand of this mouse so that it looks like he embroidered the phrase in the embroidery hoop. And then we're gonna add that little dress with some tape runner and then the mouse with the thimble, who's my absolute favorite. We're gonna add him with some foam squares on the back. And then we'll add some more accessories, a little foam square on that spool of ribbon. And then we're gonna add the scissors with some tape runner as if they're behind that little mouse with the thimble. The last step is to add this to a card base. This is a standard size card base, a five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runner to the back of this and then we can layer it onto the card. And this is a really cute and simple card. It's a really easy to mass produce card and a design that could be used for all different occasions because all you would need to do was just change up the sentiment that you stamp in the center of the hoop. You could change the paper of the background to maybe make it a different color depending on the recipient's favorite color. It could be a birthday card, it could be a thank you card, thinking of you all sorts of different things because I love that all of those magic messages could fit inside. And so next up we have some incredible cards by the design team and oh my goodness you guys are going to be blown away. This card by Callie is so stunning. I love that rainbow cross stitch in the heart so much. Audrey's card blew me away. I love how she added those little die cut clouds to the rainbow and those rays in the background. I am so in love with this card and I can't wait to make 20 just like it. I love how Grace created her own custom pattern on that plain piece, and she even added the words baby into her cross stitching, and I think it's so pretty. This card by Mindy is so much fun. I love the rainbow pattern that she did on the heart, and then the other cool thing is that this is a pull and pop card, so as you pull the tab, the heart lifts, and you see that cute little rest of the design behind it. I love that. This card by Rebecca is so sweet, and I love the purple color palette. It's so beautiful with the lavender paper from What's Sewing On. Megan was so creative and she just left that plain design as texture in the background and then added a stamp sentiment to her embroidery hoop and I love this idea and can't wait to try it. And then this card by Elena is so sweet. I love how she curved the sentiment around the embroidery hoop and the little extra added hearts. Grace did another beautiful custom design. I love those little flowers she added and then the word mom into the hoop is so pretty. I also love that she has the stamped hoop from the So Very My stamp set right next to it. That's so sweet. This card by Elise is so pretty. I love how she used three different shades of pink onto her heart. And here Shari created her own custom bee pattern that is so sweet on this embroidery hoop. I just love it with the wet sewing on paper in the background. And then this card by Leticia is so pretty and I love the stamped hearts all of the way around her beautiful stitch design. I love how Melissa took a totally different approach to the embroidery hoop and she used just the hearts as beautiful texture on the back of her layout. I am just in love with it. And then I was so amazed when I saw Kara's card and how she had kind of three hearts stitched into her design. It's so pretty. And then this card by Melissa is just gorgeous. I love how she added some distressing to the paper. It goes so beautifully with that embroidered heart. So we cannot wait to see all of your beautiful embroidery hoop projects. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.